Hi, Mark Numbers here. Today we are with Josh Madsen, a Telmark skier. He loves the sport, he's passionate about it, but we're actually here at his shop, Free Hill Life in Salt Lake City. We're talking to Josh about his passion about the sport and his mission to preserve, protect, and promote Telmark skiing. My name is Josh Madsen, I'm the owner of Free Hill Life. We're gonna sh shred this nice sort of bump line down to the bottom. It's gonna be beautiful. When I was 14 years old, I moved to Utah. I had a little bit of ski experience and uh, saw Telemark skiing, went to the library here in Salt Lake and found a Telemark book. It was called Cross Country Downhill by Steve Barnett. And I checked the book out and found some old kind of metal edge cross country skis and leather boots and, and taught myself. I, I never thought Telemark was gonna be any sort of a career path. Worked up here for a winter, washed dishes at, at the Rustler Lodge and then basically ended up, um, somebody was like, hey, you should come shoot photos. And I was like, cool, okay. And I shot a photo and the, the photographer at the time was working with a brand called Carhu. She's like, I think I can get you a free pair of skis. And she got me a free pair of skis and I started to realize, I was like, man, maybe I could travel doing this. And that kind of the next seven years, I became a sponsored athlete and was doing, I did like one Warren Miller movie in 2005. I did a bunch of Telemark movies and then started making my own Telemark movies in uh, 2006. And uh, yeah, put out, five different movies and toured them all over the country and a little bit in Europe and then opened my shop in 2014. The story of Free Heel Life as a retail shop and a brand and now making skis and all this stuff um, <laughs> kind of has a funny backstory of a lot of things that didn't work. I went from being sponsored and being in the movies and I always like to say, you're not making a full-time living, you know? I mean, it was, that's what I was doing in the winter and then I would wait tables or whatever in the summer. So that led me into making my own movies, which at the time I thought, man, I'm gonna make Telemark movies. This is the way to promote Telemark and show people what's going on. Then I became the editor at Telemark Skier Magazine in my 30s and I was like, this is the way. I'm gonna teach people, I'm gonna show Telemark in magazine format. Made some good impact, but wasn't really the way. And so um, in 2014, when I opened Free Hill Life, I think I started understanding retail was a really good way that I could make it financially viable. People needed the stuff. People didn't really need movies and they didn't really need magazines. People need boots, skis, bindings, instruction, help. It turned out to be a good choice. Did you go work in a shop for a while? How did you get to this point of like, I'm gonna build some skis. <laughs> that was pretty much it. We were like, so my buddy Todd, at seven skis down the street. I met him the very first year I opened, he walked in, and that's kind of where it popped. He's like, hey, I make, I make skis. And I was like, oh, cool. He's like, I can make you some skis. And that's where the wood top sheet ones came from. And then we just talked about it over the years, over the years, and finally last year we were like, um, Taylor had made a pair of skis for himself and we liked how they were working, and he's like, we should do this. And I said, all right, if we're gonna do this, let's buy the machines. I mean, literally it was us saying, let's make skis. And then we just figured it out. So, here we are. Sure. Basically, this is, uh, this is our ski factory. So we, we put this together last year. We'll roll the fabric out and clip it, and then we've got different measurements for the different sizes. Cool. You know, carbon fiber and glass. These are all to put, uh, attach the edge to the base and then you put the edge and then you clamp the edge and then you super glue it on Cool. And then you end up with base and edge and then that goes into your sandwich that you're making for the skis Killer. This is the wood has gone through a CNC machine to get you'll see it's you can kind of see the hourglass shape Yeah, that's your side cut What's a CNC machine? It uses like a router bit and then it has a computer program and so we've programmed it to cut um, it can do a couple so the first thing it does is cut this shape okay out of a out of a rectangular block your the flex width depth yep and so it can create yeah a different 
just an engineering piece. Yeah. All that sandwich I just talked about. Oh, okay. This is it. Is, it, um, is this fiberglass here? That's like fiberglass. Resin? And then the resin is like all this junk that gets laid up. This is actually flax. And so we use a little bit of flax in the tip for dampening. Okay. So that you don't get like tip flap. And that's what's kind of crazy. When you start making skis, you literally can put anything in it you want. I mean. Yeah, like throw some horse hair in there. Yeah, you do whatever. <laughs> also back here, we've cataloged like 400 parts back to the 1980s. And so like little pieces. So it's both something that tech can use, but it's also a way for us to, um, yeah, just provide a service to people. Hard to find parts and Dude. all the used gear comes in here and then it gets processed through here. Gets a photo, gets a photo taken, goes on the website. So that's kind of the complete, so the whole concept of the place is creating an industry. You know, so we have the marketing ability, we have the, you know, shipping ability. Now manu manufacturing is kind of the last piece of the puzzle, right? Like making stuff and then all the way to being able to ship it to somebody around the world. To see skis with the name on it, I mean, really, really gave me that sense of accomplishment where that was true. I made, I made something with my friends, I mean, honestly, we would love to see everything in our shop be what the original intent was, free heel life on all the stuff. But I think we quickly realized that there's needs for other stuff too, and we don't have the resources to make free heel life everything yet. But uh, I think if we wait long enough, we'll, we'll figure it out. Alta is my home mountain. It's seeped in tradition of Telemark and freehill skiing uh, all the way back to the late 70s. Alta just seemed a really good fit for where we all kind of wanted to congregate and ski as shop people. They've just been so open to us doing demos, having activities, and it's just been a good cultural hub for us to, to ski. It's the most enjoyable part of it's been able to do so many things, meet so many cool people, and see the passion that people have for this thing and be able to provide some sort of a service, access to information, access to the history that they may not have known. And I think there's something for everybody. And, and for me, that's the sense of community that's around it is, is really the most important thing for me. The sensation of Telemark once you figure it out, and there's, there's really a common point. I think if you asked any Telemarker around the world, when was the first time you linked turns? So when, we, when were you able to make one Telemark turn and then smoothly transition into the next one and it clicked? And I think that's, that's the moment that is sort of the commonality amongst all Telemark skiers around the world. And that's the bond. The sensation is what it's all about. That's literally why people do it. They know, they know something you don't know yet. I've loved hanging out with Josh today, learning more about his story and his passion. Check out Free Hill Live. Josh and his team will take care of you. They're awesome. I'm Mark Numbers. Life's short. Get out there. Live your own adventure.